The book, it takes imagination to read. The book of Ezekiel. You know, Scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, that I hath not seen, nor has ear heard, what God has prepared for them that what? Love that love him. Now, I'm going to read something out of Ezekiel chapter 10. It's a strange description of something God created for his purpose. But then again, if you can imagine what the scripture lays out, it is really beyond logic for you to even think about 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where I have not seen, nor has ear heard what God has prepared for them that love him. Now, the Lord gave me a word in uh, January 2nd, and if you want to list it down in numbers, it'd be 1222. But I personally believe, and, I, and the Lord has told me to stay away from listening to other prophets. That way what I get, I get is original, not a running off of water from what other people might say. So uh, anyway, the Lord spoke to me and said, this is a year of judgment. Now, if you're a doom and gloom person, you immediately run and want to hide. But see, until there is the day of judgment, all judgment of God is for the purpose of restoration. God wants to restore what the thief and the canker worm and the pommel worm has stolen from you is what the word says. And God wants to restore your health. That's why there's, do you realize his God, the Father's name is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that is your healer. Now he is also Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that is your provider. But ask yourself this question and go home and think about it. Why is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that is your healer, why did he require 39 stripes out of his son? And then prophesy about it in Isaiah 53 that by his stripes we are. And in Matthew 8, 17, we were. And in 1 Peter 2, 24, we was. And if we are, we were, we was, then why aren't we is? Because God reaffirmed who he is through his son, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that is, your healer. By his stripes we were. Well, what happened to the are and is? See, faith is a substance of expectancy. I'm a firm believer faith is an attitude. Because see, if you're, well, James says if you're double-minded, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, like people, you know, testifying in church years ago. You know, y'all pray for me. The devil's after me, bless his holy name. <laughs> I was uh, telling my brother before church, I said, you don't know what prophetically this means. When you see the sun shining and it's raining while the sun is shining. Was anybody raised with the revelational knowledge of what that means? This is what I was raised. I was raised with this is what it means. When the sun is shining and it's raining while you see the sun. I mean you see the sunbeams and it's raining. I was always told the devil's beating his wife. Now, we can look at issues, but where I am here for, tomorrow morning we're going to deal with an issue of judgment. And we're going to ask God to bring judgment tomorrow morning. And I'm so honored to have greater glory with us tonight. And I am so honored to have all of you with us tonight. You know, Freedom Outpost and whatever place you come from and whatever place you might be. 
You know, I guarantee you, every time you see the sunshine and it's raining, you're going to think about it. The devil's beating his wife. But see, Heoth has seen no fury like a scorned woman either. <laughs> and there's scriptures. They don't have no scriptures in your Bible. It says it's better for a woman to hide when the husband's mad. No, it says it's better for a man to dwell on the rooftop of a house when he's got a mad wife. Ain't that in your Bible? See, there's something about the power of authority that we do not take seriously enough. It's called influence. Influence. But anyway, the Lord gave me a word, and, and I'm going to read you the word. But let me create an understanding here of what you're looking for. Because in Ezekiel, it describes that there was a cherubim that stood on the right side in verse 3 of chapter 10 of Ezekiel, stood on the right side of the house, and, and, and then he goes on and starts, as you read all of chapter 10, and I'm not going to spend time teaching on this, but if you'll get down to verse 14, it talks about, it says, that there was a cherubim, which is the Entice the entirety of all four. There was the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, and then there was one other face right there. The face of a what? A lion. Now each one can be prophetically symbolic. The ox for strength. The eagle for clarity and the ability of rising above the storm. Because you know an eagle can see two miles away. And then the, the, you know, the man, which should represent authority. And then you've got, which ones have I covered? Y'all stay here with me? The lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah is known for its praise. Now, I guarantee you that if you will begin to develop an attitude of praise, it will go into an attitude of worship. Because see, worship is an attitude where praise can fluctuate with atmosphere. And there's times people say, I don't feel like it. Let me tell you something. If you cannot suppress your feelings, you will not release the glory. If you cannot be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our logical service. If you cannot cast down thoughts and imaginations and everything that exalts itself against what God says. See, it's not our knowledge of God, it's God's knowledge of you and what he has said. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 4, 3, 4, and 5. It says, you know, though we walk after this flesh, we don't war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I know y'all don't believe in this, but I need, boy, I, I like seeing a clock in, in front of me. That way, I don't see it, but don't you ain't got to do nothing special. You say, why? Because that way I can see how long I preached. You say, why do you want to know how long you preached? That way I can shut you up if you call me a long-winded preacher. <laughs> but here's the prophecy that the Lord gave me. He said, judgment is coming in 2022. And you say, what do you mean? There's, I mean, there's all gloom and despair and agony on me and deep, dark depression, excessive misery. You know, I mean, yes, there is going to be problems. And you say, well, have you prepared for it? Yes, I've got about 10 cases of bottled water. You say, why? Because, see, if there is a, uh, what's that EPT thing? If EMP. Uh, EMP, where everybody's electricity disappears. That means you ain't going to get no water through your faucet. And then again, have you got candles or lights or anything with common sense. Because if your electricity gets out, y'all can snuggle and cuddle all you want. But have you made preparation? Because see, if you're making preparation for the enemy, I mean, I got food. You know, I got, man, I got candle soups running out my ears. 
I mean, that's the easiest stuff to open up. You got a full meal deal with a dollar and a half, you know. And you say, well, why are you, are you in fear? No, God said he'd supply my need. You say, well, where, where is your need at? In the act of wisdom. Because preventative maintenance, isn't that called wisdom? And in 1986, the Lord spoke audibly to me and he said, if you live by excuses, you can die because of reasons. So you preparing for the worst? Let me tell you something, darling. If you break in my house and I jump out of bed, I'm going to show you love. And see, that's what I've named my Smith and Wesson. Yes, I'm going to give you scriptures and say repent because if you keep coming at me and I say I bind you, then the anointing is going to flow directly towards you and it's about that long. You say, you mean, no, I ain't neither. I'm not stupid either. Because prophet Forrest Gump said, stupid is as stupid does. And for you to act like the devil ain't real, you stupid. If you acting like nobody gonna break into your house, you more than stupid because you locked your door every night for what reason? Because if you didn't think somebody gonna break in, why you lock your door? Because I grew up, we slept with the screen door open. We slept with the windows wide open. But we still had Shirley. Who was Shirley? That 12 gauge in the corner. And I'm a firm believer giving no place to the... You say, well, well the devil, he's a spirit, but he possesses his people. I remember I was at a church and I laid hands on the youth pastor and the worship leader. When I did, a demon manifested. He went berserk. He went, I mean, everybody freaking out. You could tell. I mean, he got on the floor and slithered like a snake. And then he got up and come at me like this. And I said, fall. He fell out on the floor, was still. A week later, I'm in New Orleans and I got about 800 people in front of me. A woman comes to me. I'm on the stage and she comes at me with a big rock in her hand. And she says, I'm going to kill you in front of everybody. And I said, fall. She didn't fall. I said, fall. She didn't fall. But it worked last week. And the Lord spoke to me and said, don't take the eyes of the people off of Jesus and put it on one little devil. And I said, ushers, y'all deal with her. And she went, they went and grabbed her, took her out, cast the devil out of her. She hugged my neck after service and said, thank you. I didn't do squat diddly do. Now y'all know what squat diddly do is? Thank God for some genuine rednecks. But she hugged my neck and said, thank you so much for setting me free. Like I said, I didn't do squat diddly do. But there's unity in the body. When there's functions, there's clarity. So here's the prophecy God gave me. This is the year Jesus and angels will begin to appear. Randomly again and again throughout the nations over and over again, Jesus and angels will appear before the eyes of men. Signs and wonders like never known or shown before will begin to appear. Now that's the scripture I gave you. And then can you imagine one creation that has the face of a man on this side, the face of a lion on this side, the face of an ox on this side, and the face of an eagle on this side. And eagles represent prophetic. So that's one creation that has four faces and four identities. And see, men's eyes shall see 
Seeing will be beyond logic and men's eyes shall begin to see. Seeing truth will divide and unite. Ain't that strange? Truth will divide and unite. Your Bible says where your heart is is where your treasure is. You believe what you want to believe. But I'm a firm believer if you can talk yourself into it and you can talk yourself out of it. But when it's God, you can't talk yourself out of it and you, you don't have to talk yourself into it when you know it's God. But seeing truth will divide and unite for hidden desires will surface and hearts will be expressed for those who take a stand. A breakthrough will begin to happen for those who hate a lie. Do you know that Jesus in Revelations address hot and cold? He said if you're lukewarm, he will what? He won't repeat what you're saying. Can you imagine Jesus up chugging? Now what makes people up chuck? Any of y'all ever up chuck? I mean there's some churches they pass buckets around when people start up chucking. Do they do that here, George? See, y'all pass the bucket. Come out! <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> now, can you imagine Jesus? Because the Bible does say, if you're hot or cold, but if you're lukewarm, he's going to up chuck. And he don't stick his finger in his mouth to do that either. And see, that's a sign there's something sick. He, he is not going to digest and come into an agreement of something coming in him that is not good for him. And the Bible says, for him that knows to do good and does it not to him, it's sin. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9 it says, And Jesus was given the diadem, the rod of authority, because he loved righteousness and hated lawlessness, hated iniquity. Do your old thing. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. I mean, we the people of God are being pressured into a place where God's going to give you the grace to behold his face. But do you want it? Because the more of God you see, the more of an increase of responsibility. Because to whom much is given, much is required. So he goes on and says here, he, yeah, seeing truth will divide and unite for hidden desires will surface and hearts will be expressed for those who take a stand. You know, Jesus is. The rock of offense is what Peter lists him as. Now, if this bothers you, I'm going to chip off the old rock. And that's just it. Have you ever dropped a rock in water? It creates a ripple effect. And do you realize that there are going to be small things that's going to happen that's going to challenge the word of the Lord in people's lives? And either it spreads and reaches beyond your perimeter or it don't. See, there are three things that, well, really four, but see, God will speak to you by his word, by his spirit, by his servant that speaks his word by his spirit. That's three. All right, then he'll get your attention by your circumstances. If, you cannot, if he can't get your attention with the word and his spirit and a servant that speaks his word and his spirit, then he's going to let you begin to reap what you sow. Galatians 6, 7. God is not taken lightly. He's not joked at. He's not treated irrespectfully. Because see, the fear, the fear of God is the beginning of understanding. And the more you see the majesty and his audacity, the more you reverence him. And the more you cherish the intimacy of a relationship, you're going to do everything you can not to offend him, not to grieve him, not to frustrate him. Because see, I've said this before, but when you love people more than you love Jesus, 
Jesus said you're not worthy of him. But when you love people more than you love the Holy Ghost, people can put you into hell, but only the Holy Ghost can put you in heaven. And I don't know nobody. And I got three wonderful babies. Seth, Jordan, and Anna Grace. Three wonderful kids. But I ain't going to hell over none of them. And I'm going to do my best that they don't go to hell at all. But see, that's just it. You cannot expect out of others what you don't expect out of yourself. But he says, a breakthrough will begin to happen for those who hate a lie. The love of truth will be released will release a move of God no man can deny. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. As hypocrisy will be disdained, what's it mean for something to be disdained? If you hate a lie, you hate a liar. You say, but I love people. God does too, but he's still going to put the lake of fire right there beside the liar and then he's going to kick him in. But see, what's worse is how we that we want to keep living like we are, like there's not the coming of the Lord. And see, the coming of the Lord is like a squall. Any of y'all know what a squall is? I ain't talking about an Indian. I'm talking about a squall. What's a squall, sis? But it, see, it comes, and all at once it's poof, but it comes in just a little bit, and then wham! And I'm telling you, we're fixing to see a display of the I Am. And the glory of God is going to begin to loom. And lives will be changed. But at the same time, there are those that the glory of God used to loom, but because of hypocrisy. What's it mean for the glory of God to loom over you? To hover. And, and, and there's those that they, they are hypocrites, they're liars. They, they lie to the people because they preach one thing, live another thing. They carry the mantle, but yet they don't live the life. And without holiness, no man can go see God. And there's going to be people, they're, they're going to lose the anointing, it's going to lift. You say, but the gifts and calling. Yeah, the gifts and calling is without repentance. Didn't say nothing about the anointing. You have to earn the anointing. You see how you have to earn the anointing? Get right with God, stay right with God, and humble yourself that he might exalt you. Because if God can't trust you with his presence, because he said in his word, he's not sharing his glory with no one. And if you humble yourself, he'll lift you up. But you exalt yourself. See, it's not about, look at me, look at No, it's not about you, it's about him. Because in Him we live and move and have our very existence. So it says here, the love of truth will, be, will release a move of God that no man can deny. And He says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. As hypocrisy will be disdained, the hearts of masses will be changed. The lukewarm will not blend in and cold hearts will stand out while the fire of God is visible upon men. You know, there's the hot and the cold. I'm a firm believer that the church is the threshing floor. What do you mean the threshing floor? If you read your Bible, you'll find the threshing floors where they separated the wheat from the chaff. They separated the flesh from the spirit. The wheat is the meat. You don't eat the shell that... The wheat is in. And your Bible says be living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your logical service. And in Romans 6, 16 says, to whom you yield yourself a servant. You say, this is so deep and so heavy. If you want the glory, you can be a spectator or a participator. What do you want to be? One that carries the anointing or one that just watches somebody else carry the anointing? Because see, God's wanting the anointing. See, everybody here, you're a child of destiny. You're a person that God has given a purpose. And for this purpose came the Son of God to destroy the works of the devil. And do you realize the very instrument Jesus used to preach the gospel, to get him to the place of him being the living sacrifice, 
Because if you can't sacrifice your time, you'll not sacrifice your mind. If you don't sacrifice your mind, you'll not sacrifice your will. If you don't know, learn how to sit still and wait on the Lord, am I making any sense? See, God is wanting you to come up higher, but God's got to be able to get you to a place where you can have confidence in him, but confidence in you. Philippians 1, being confident of this very thing, he that has begun a good work in you. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my what? So do you realize that being born again gets God to move in? But you've got to move in also with him. And you don't bring your junk with him. I mean, you literally forsaking all, you follow him. Because see, when you begin to seek ye the Lord, you're going to find more than God. You're going to find out there's times you ain't spiritual like you thought you would be. You don't feel like praying. You don't feel like worshiping. But you got to make a choice. You got to make a choice to get out of bed. You got to make a choice to go to bed. You got to make a choice to eat. You got to make a choice to take a bath. I mean, I have one, one, one of the best translators I've ever had in France. I've been to Europe 25 times. And to this day, I'd go out of my way to use this man as a translator of translating English into French. And the first time I used him, he flowed with me. He had a prayer life. He had an anointing. But he was rank. He stank. I tried to get away from him, and he followed me like a shadow. And after service, I told him, I said, Look, bro, I love you. I want to use you tomorrow night, but take a bath. He went home, took a bath. The next night, he said, you smell me now? I said, well, you good, bro. You good. You said, that's so rude. For me to help you help you, is that rude? Is it wrong for me to tell you to take a bath? Is it wrong for me to hand you Tic Tacs? I mean... Does anybody need Listerine? I mean, you say, what are you saying? Little things can upset you. Little things can regress you. And Isaiah 1 says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll do what? You'll eat the good of the land. And 2 Corinthians 8 9 says that he was rich, became poor, that you might be made rich. We're going to have a release of blessings, a release of finances, a release where it lit. And I know this is going to freak you out, but preachers, without a doubt, they're going to lock the church doors. And everybody that's in a service, I mean, they're going to come forward with the list of how much they owe, and, and the preachers are going to start passing out the dough and get you out of debt in one service. You say, why lock the doors? Because when people start calling on, the, not, on their cell phones, you better get up here. They're giving money away. They're going to come knocking on the door, not because of the glory, but because of the results of the glory. Because the anointing destroys every yoke. Is debt a yoke? The anointing destroys every yoke. Does debt keep you from being blessed going in, blessed coming out, the head not to tail and come behind in no good thing? I mean, the anointing can convict you of how you eat, how you sleep. Why? Because your Bible says give no place to the devil. And see, he will lead you and guide you and direct you into all truth. Well, the truth is, darling, we got ourselves in this mess and only Jesus can get us out. But that's where the anointing, and we're going to have the anointing. There's going to be people walk in poor, walk out that door and come into wealth, come in divine health. The blind will see, the lame will walk, the dumb will talk. I mean, the amputated uh, uh, veterans or whatever person might be, the cancer, the growth, I mean, whatever it might be. Instantly, the anointing is going to change lives and set people free. But then again, I have not seen nor ear has heard what God has prepared. So can you imagine the face of a lion, the face of a man, 
the face of an eagle, the face of an ox, being in one person. One person. But all had a different verbiage, a different statement, a different purpose, but yet still the same body. And we are the body of Christ. And yet the body of Christ is at odds with each other. Isn't that wonderful? Because see, if you act like them that criticize you, you're as big of a hypocrite as they are. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You have to grow up and learn how to shut up. I talked to this preacher the other day, him and his wife constantly fighting. And I said, you know what your problem is? Every time y'all get in an argument, you always got to leave the room for throwing gas on it before you leave. I'm walking off. I'm leaving the room. I'm not feeding the fire. Yes, you are too with your last words before you walk out. You don't know how it is to shut up. Am I making any sense? Because see, you can't straddle the fence. Either you're on the Lord's side, either you're hot or you're cold. When you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. Na, 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 na. Y'all never heard that song. <laughs> Jerry sang that. He says here, hypocrisy will be disdained and the hearts of masses will change. The lukewarm will not blend in and cold hearts will stand out while the fire of God is visible upon men. The end of the beginning, the end is beginning and to some the old will become new. Now that's a heavy review right there. To some the old will become new. Because your Bible says without holiness. And see, holiness is not what you wear. Holiness is how you respond to what other people wear. Because you can have your bun, you can have your face, you can have your clothes, you can not go here, not go there. I mean, I remember years ago I went in the bar to, to witness and the guy that was with me said, you can't go in there. Jesus ain't going to get you. I was raised that if you went to a movie, Jesus was not going to come in there and get you. Yeah, I was, I was. I was raised with more canes than we ever could do. Serious. I mean, we couldn't go to the bowling alley. Couldn't go to the football games. We got abstained from all appearance of evil. But it's amazing. We go to church and we'll pout, we'll doubt, and not shout. We'll criticize, itemize, and look mean with somebody with their eyes. But it's amazing how that we think that we're right with God, yet we think like the world. We act like the world, but yet, I mean, when I was in Paris, France, they took me, was in the Jewish neighborhood where they had just had a bombing. We're eating at the restaurant. We're going to have communion. They just passed it around, gave me bread, gave me a glass, and I thought it was grape juice. When I took my drink to drink my communion, I said, Jesus, that's the nastiest I ever tasted your blood. It burnt going down. It was nasty because it was real wine. When I was my first trip in Netherlands and Holland, I mean, had a great move of God. Everybody laid out. We went to a restaurant and really it was a pub, a bar. And as we're sitting there, I'm standing there at the bar drinking Perrier, you know, water with air. And they got wine and we got beer. They're drinking it. And, 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 and we go sit at the table and we joined hands and started singing hallelujah out loud in the, in the bar. And the presence of God fell. And I'm freaking out. And I said, God, you're in a bar. <laughs> but what are you expecting? Light never has to ask darkness to leave. If you are what you are, you are what you are. Is you is or is you not? Are you the redeemed or not? Because society, the Antichrist, is shoving down your throat a spirit of fear. Trying to manipulate you by getting you to the place where you trust them more than you do your conscience. And see, as many as are led by the Spirit, you say, what's right and what's wrong? If you've got to ask that question, you don't have a right relationship with God. Because I can tell you straight up, 
that he is not going to let you move your stuff in his house that he builds that mansion. See, I told somebody the other day, I said, if you live it in my house, you're going to live by my rules. And they said, well, I'd get a padlock locked you out. And I said, I'd get the cops and kick you out. Because if I'm paying the rent, I'm paying for the lights, and you're using my water to wash with, and you're going to do what you want in my house. I said, you can get your house and get all the freedom you want. But in my house, and that's just it. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, see, we think that we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. You're going to get a new body. The Lord is going to be changed in immortality. But what about your attitude? What about your thinking process? I can remember my daddy getting on to me one time and said, Boy, don't you talk to me like that. I said, What did I say? He said, You looked at me and said a lot. I tried to freeze frame myself and go look in the mirror to see what I said. He said, the next time you talk to me with that look, I'm going to slap that look off of you. Jesus. And see, love is an attitude. And you say, well, you can't be mad and love you. You can too. Because Jesus hates iniquity. I mean, did God look at Ananias and, and say, kill him? Ooh, that felt good, felt good. Let's do it again, do it again, do it again. And then Sapphire come in there. Whoo, do it again. And then they, the angel, let's go kill Herod. Whoo, let's do it again, do it again. No, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. But the thief comes to steal, kill, and... And do you realize you can change the atmosphere with an attitude? And you're not going to get into the presence of God and stay there in the presence of God without being changed, rearranged, are pushed out. Because without holiness, see what's holiness? It's not what's on the external, it's what's on the internal. It's how you respond. For God so loved that he gave. No greater love is anyone this than this and they lay down their life. I can lay down my life with you, but what's my attitude when I walk away? Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Now, you know Adam and Eve got us in the problem we're in. You say, why? Because Adam loved Eve more than he loved God. And Adam was passive. He did not take his place of responsibility. He was passive. And do you realize there's never a Jezebel without an Ahab? And Ahab is passive. And passive Christians say they love righteousness, but they don't hate sin. I love the sinner. That's just it. If you do not change the atmosphere with your attitude, you better keep your mouth shut. Because see, love is what God is. But love also requires, requires that you love people enough to tell them the truth. And the truth is, no, there's no such thing as a transvestite. Amen. You might want to say it is, but that somebody's got a devil. And I'm telling you straight up, the enemy is trying to distort your view. He's trying to get you to accept the battle we're going through. And I'm telling you, God is releasing judgment this year. And it's going to start with restoration and if it does not come to a place where there's repentance, because if you read Matthew 18, it says, if you, it says, if your brother's offended for you to go to him. And, and I don't find too many people going out of their way to be, you know, my brother's keeper. That's what Cain said about Abe. I'm not my brother's keeper. But keep peace in the peace of God. There's times that we have to say, I'm sorry I offended you. I didn't mean to. I, don't, I apologize for my personality, but I love me. But then again, you know, if you don't like the way I sound, let's go Biden. No, or is it Brandon? You say, I don't like that. That's just it. 
You got a pedophile in the White House and we act like everything's okay. You got witchcraft that's trying to lead our nation away from the Constitution, but yet we don't speak up and say nothing because Ahab is letting Jezebel take over. And if you want light to get bright, you're going to have to stop the hindrance. 23rd Psalms. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the... Of what? What creates a shadow? What, Larry, what creates a shadow? Do what? Huh? Huh? What creates a shadow? Come on now. What cre- Think about it. Think about it. Come on now. Two plus two is six, right? Now what creates a shadow? Something blocking the light. Because if all you got is light, you ain't got no shadow. But if you got something blocking the light, and yea, though I walk through the shadow of death, that which is blocking life, I will not fear. I will not fear. And see, Revelations 22 verse 8 says, the fearful and unbeliever will be cast into the lake of fire with the liar, with the thief, with the whoremonger, with the murderer. I mean, that's sad. But there's people in the church that go to church, but they don't believe. And there's people in the body of Christ that are more concerned and fearful of COVID than they fear God. Am I wrong? But this is your Bible, your chapter, your verse. And if you can pull something out of the Old Testament, throw it away. But then Revelation, God says, if any man changes what is written in this book, let them be accursed. And you cannot pick and choose how you're going to walk with God, reverence God, serve God. You got to get right or you're going to get left. And I'm telling you, the anointing is going to increase. So this is says, he says, the end is beginning and some of the old will become new. Watch what you say for words will affect quickly one's lifestyle in these last days. God has not mocked what you sow is what you reap. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Choose life, choose death, choose blessing, choose cursing. Because see, it's just it. If you're sowing discord amongst the brethren, Proverbs 6 says, God abhors, he hates violently those that are sowing discord amongst the brethren. So all of you tongue-talking, Bible-toting Christians, may God judge you. Because if you'll not let him restore you to what is right in his eyes, may he begin to eliminate you sowing discord in the church amongst the brethren, gossiping, slandering, not forgiving. Because he God's not mocked what you sow. You say, this is a hard, this is not a hard sermon. This is the basic steps to enter into the Holy of Holies. Because whether you like it or not, we have a rope tied around our flesh, we've got a bell on our leg, and we're coming into the presence of God, and the priest wore the bell and wore the rope because there were secret sins in them, and if so be, they were struck dead. And Ananias and Sapphira had a secret sin, and they were struck dead dead. And if you will read the epistles, Paul turns people over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh, that their soul might be saved. With the increase of glory is going to be the increase of responsibility. How many kids you got now? Zach? Four? Oh, three. One more is on the way. Not today? Okay. Can some of you handle the glory? Preacher, 
from greater glory, stand up in the aisle where you're at. Somebody quickly run behind him. Stand out in the aisle, back up. There it goes. Bye. There's a new mantle coming. It's not going to cover your back as much as cover your front. Because that new mantle is armor. Because see, what God is wanting you to do is double your output and triple your input. He's wanting to make you, he's wanting to make you fat on the Word. Not physically fat in your body, but where literally you hear the Word that nobody else hears. You see in the Spirit like nobody else sees. You'll do the work of the evangelist, but at the same time, you will always be apostolic as a pastor. Because he, a true apostle, can fulfill all five. Can be a teacher, a pastor, evangelist, you know, a prophet. You know, all those things. But at the same time, there is a training process where, ooh, the glory is going to increase. And the glory is going to increase. And you'll be out on days on the floor and people are going to say, he has not even got up to get go to the bathroom yet. He's been on the floor in front of the altar and we don't know what to do. People are going to say, call 911. And it's not God that's going to let them do this because you're not out in the flesh. You're out in the spirit because signs and wonders you will be but signs and wonders you will see. For I see two services on Sunday morning where you will lead people into a depth of the glory that people have not been a witness of in that area since the 50s. Because God said, I'm coming again to your region. I'm coming again to your area. I'm coming again with the former and the latter rain. But you better walk slow, son, because if you outstep me, I will let you step out of my will and alter your destiny. So you best walk slow because when I literally tell you what to do and where to go, I want it done when I say it and when I want it. And that means that you're pliable. You submit to the potter that has you in his hands. You don't shape yourself based on the words of man, but you're led by the Holy Ghost. You're led by the Word. You're led by prayer. You literally are going to walk in a greater anointing in spiritual warfare. Do you realize Catherine Kuhlman walked through the airport? People would fall out under the anointing as she passed them by. You're looking at a greater anointing that no man can deny. But to whom much is given, much is required. So keep yourself right in God's sight because religious people are like gravity. They always want to pull you down to their dirt level. But spiritual people are like the eagle saying, come up higher, come up higher, come up higher, come up higher, come up higher. There it is. I break every curse, verbal curse. Father, I see three people that's going to leave this earth soon. Do you not grieve over them? Yes, you will. But yet at the same time, you'll find that when you can let go of the hindrance, you can find the answer. And even though people say they love, it's something that they literally, they're not wise as a serpent, as harmless as a dove. Because see, a serpent is using wisdom and strategy and timing to look before it strikes. And a dove will fight to protect its young. A dove will fight other birds. He'll fight crows to keep from getting the eggs and other birds. A dove will fight. A dove is not always passive and indifferent, just goo. I wish I could, you could do that. You can have a seat. But I'm telling you, you fix, God's fixing to put a bigger foot on your feet. And you're going to walk in the glory and the glory you'll see and know. Because God has said, I'm going to cause signs and wonders to take place everywhere you go, whether it's in the market, whether it's in the garage, whether it's in the house, whether no matter where it be. I see you sitting at the dinner table and you drop your head and you begin to weep. And people just want you to go pray somewhere else, but they begin to weep with you. And they begin to weep with you because the issue of souls, of spontaneous, immediate obedience opens the door of the miraculous. And God wants you literally to be the hinges of the door for the glory of God to flow in your area like never before. But it takes immediate obedience. You say, yes, sir. 
You don't think about it. You don't say, can I do it later? You say, yes, sir, because he has priority. Seek ye first. Amen. But in, in closing in this vision God gave me, he said, what you say with your words will affect quickly one's lifestyle these last days. Jesus is coming visible here and there before the notable moment bride, before the notable moment the bride will meet him in the air. Then on this yes sir. People think they're going up in the rapture because they've been born again. I'll just give you a little different thought, okay? He's coming after the bride for the marriage supper of the lamb. Here's a thought. The bride's without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Isn't that true? And see, we got people born again, but they're not walking around spot, wrinkle, and blemish. They're still carrying that stuff. And see, I believe, I don't teach this first time maybe on public I push this, but I believe the tithe of the church, not the money, the first fruits of the people, is those that have separated themselves and come out from amongst him. Those that have walked holy. Those that have not been hypocrites or liars or thieves. They've been living sacrifices. If you'll read Romans chapter 12, he lists things of personality, of hospitality, of a servant. And if you want to be an apostle, be a servant. If you want to be a prophet, be a servant. If you want to be a leader, be a servant. Because the greatest leaders are greatest servants. And he said here, and then on the earth there will be chaos or chaos that will begin. It will begin to happen everywhere after the first fruits disappears. You say, are you first fruits? I sure hope to God I am. But then again, I have bad days too. And he's coming in the twinkling of an eye. That's a blink. And that's why you've got to come back to the fear of the Lord where your priority your priority. Because see, if you think that you can get away with pouting and doubting and sowing discords and, and clamor amongst the church, uh-uh, uh-uh. May God judge you severely. David prayed it, judge between me and my enemy. You say, well, Lord, who is our enemy? Everybody that disagrees with God. Those that sow discord amongst the brethren, those that are releasing curses, word curses. And they think they're judging you. Let me tell you something straight out. You better be right with God when you start judging other people because God not mock what you sow, what you reap. And I have a strong philosophy. If you're doing more accidentally for God than I'm doing on purpose, I'm going to leave you alone. You may not like this one. You may not like that one. Whoopie doo. Who cares what you think? The issue is you need to start living everything in your life based upon one word, eternity. Because one last breath, that's your eternity. One last breath, that's your eternity. One last breath, that's your eternity. So when does your eternity begin? Your last breath. Oh no, it began when I was born for my mother. No opportunity started there for you to please God. Because God called you out of your mother's womb. He knew you when your parents didn't even know you. But it goes on and says, for, Do not despair, for now is the beginning of the glory manifestations everywhere. No man nor power can stop what God is beginning to do. He will open doors of hearts and, will, and, and the outbreak will begin with me or you. Me and you. I'm telling you straight up, this is a year the glory of God is going to appear. Many will fear and we need to. You say, well, I'm in covenant with God. Yeah, whoopee do. I'm in covenant with my dad. I can also remember my kids too. Cocked an attitude against me. Didn't like what I said. Didn't like what I did. None of y'all ever got mad at your mom and daddy, did you? None of y'all, raise your hand if your mama ever slapped you. I think you was raised right. Raise your hand if your mama has never slapped you. I think you need to go see your mama. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> but we're in, the, we're in the pivotal place. And there's going to be miracle signs and wonders that's going to take place. And the glory of God is going to begin to abound. And God's going to shake every... Okay. He's going to shake every rat hole. 
You know, there's a lot of churches that ain't nothing but rat holes. It's infected with disease. They sow discord amongst their brethren. They criticize and trash, but yet they turn up the music so they can have church. They turn off the light so they can't see who's worshiping and who's not worshiping. You say, well, that's harsh. What's going to be harder than harsh is when you stand at the gate and Jesus says, depart from me, for I never knew you. Because he said, straight is the gate. Straight is the gate that leads to eternal life. Broad and crooked leads to destruction. Broad means it fits for everybody. Crooked means we'll bend our doctrines for the way you feel. But I'm telling you, God's not sanctioning sin in the house of God. Because the holy of holies is what we became. We're the tabernacle of God, but yet we don't get the God manifestation of His holiness because we've got sin in the camp. And the reason there's sin in the camp is because there's not conviction. And when there becomes unity of conviction, when you feel what I feel, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? I mean, when you begin to see more of Jesus and when your attitude of your life and everything about your today is anticipation of your tomorrow because you have a desire to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to walk into Kroger. I want to walk into Walmart. People start falling out and demons start hissing. And people start slithering on the floor like a snake. You say, what? well, we're going to call 911. Let me tell you something. Schools are shut down because of COVID and fear. You wait till the glory of God starts to appear because the Shekinah is going to hover over certain schools in certain regions and the kids are going to be out in this Holy Ghost. Some going to be prophesying. Some going to be singing. Some going to be laughing. Some going to be weeping. Teachers are going to be crawling on their knees. Some is going to literally be crying on the phone and say, I don't understand this. What is this? And nobody can walk near the building because they think it's a chemical but the police and, the, and the, everybody falls out under the glory when they start getting near the Shekinah. I hath not seen, nor ear has heard. You wait till the raising of the dead becomes commonplace. I've seen visions. One vision I saw there was 12 caskets in front of a Colosseum. It was packed with people, because 12 prominent just people that, that was very popular. And all at once, all 12 rose up out of their coffins and everybody in the crowd started fleeing like there was fire. And 10 of them got out of their coffins and two of them said, I want to go back home. You say, you got a vain imagination. Yeah, you need to read your Bible too. Well, there's streets of gold, walls of jasper, a tree that has 12 different fruit every month. You ought to just think about a pearly gate. You ought to think about what the Old Testament says and what the New Testament says instead of trying to pick and choose what you like. Because I have not seen nor ear has heard. Stand up, darling. Someone quickly get in front of her. God says he's going to increase a direct commission of education in your life. He's going to begin to educate you in areas where you're more than a peacemaker concerning strife. But your very presence and the anointing is going to begin to change the glare of the moon. Now notice the moon only comes pretty well after darkness has shown. Now you might see a moon in the early morn. You might see it sometimes from a distance in the day. But the brightness of a moon is always at night. And there's things that God wants you to expose. Expose. You say, I don't want to go around exposing people's sin. But then again, if the Holy Ghost tells you. Years ago, I had an open vision. I was walking the perimeter of my church. And on my Facebook wall, there's two Pacifics where I preached at this church called Gethsemane Family Church. And at that church, I looked up over the threshold of the door and I saw a hand 
filled with glass. I mean, uh, uh, that was holding an hourglass. And then I saw the other hand filled with blood. And I heard God say, as time on your hands are blood. And he said, he read Ezekiel chapter 3, 17 through 21, which says, if I see my brother in sin and I warn him not and he dies in his sin, his blood is on your hands. But yet we don't, it's none of my business what they do. Yes, it is. They're going to hell. And you care more about what they think of you than what God thinks. How shall they hear without a preacher? We don't preach against sin no more. You know what a real liar is? Someone that will believe their own lies and think it's okay. Because see, when you lie, you get convicted and you know it's wrong. But when you keep searing your conscience with a hot iron, where you sear your conscience, where it don't bother you no more to lie. It don't bother you no more to, to say something about people that ain't true. I ain't got nobody laughing right now. Why not? See, we need some demons in our services to manifest where people growl like a dog, hiss like a snake. And I'm not talking about deliverance services. I'm talking about where people come in. Just do those things. But that's just it. We waiting on the pastors to deal with it. We waiting on the apostle to deal with it. No, we waiting on you to get off your blessed assurance and show us that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. foretaste. His glory is divine. I mean, it's time that you begin to be one of the body of Christ because the body of Christ is simply joined together and every joint supply. And do you realize if blood does not flow through your body, where the blood don't flow, your body deteriorates. Is that not true? And if you don't stay repentant and keep the blood washed away your sins, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? But the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And if you don't believe in the rapture, that's okay. You can be here and wait till I come back on horse to get you. Because see, I don't lose nothing by the rapture not happening. Because if I become a martyr, no greater love is anyone than this that they lay on his life. I'm going to tell you straight up, I am not going to get on my knees, stick my neck out there and say, go ahead. You say, you ain't going to submit to the government? You got that right, sucker. Because that government's a demon. I'm not going to submit to demons. Excuse me, darling. <laughs> laughter, laughter, the voice of the Spirit. Laughter, laughter, the sound of joy. When you laugh out loud, your joy will abound. You're going to scorn the gates of hell, darling. You're going to laugh yourself well. You're going to laugh yourself silly. You're going to laugh, 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 laugh. God wants you to have fun. But it's the willing and obedient is what we quoted a while ago of Isaiah. The willing and oh. Jesus gave the parable of the two sons. Said Once the father said, go to the field and do this. And one said, I'll go. But he didn't. And one said he wouldn't, but he did. We got the church full of people that are willing, but not obedient. And we got a lot of people that are obedient, but not willing. And if you cannot be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, if you cannot crucify your flesh, if you cannot make yourself shut up, well, won't you show love to that guy that breaks in your home at night? I will. I'll give him a chance to repent. But that's just it. I'm not giving place to no devil and say, come here, devil, give me a hug. 
Because see, when you got to possess where they want to do you physically harm, when they want to do you verbally harm, when they begin to sow discord amongst the brethren, Proverbs 6, God hates those that shed innocent blood and sow discord amongst the brethren. And here we, God is love and he hates somebody. And he hated what was in Ananias so, so, so fast that he didn't confront him on the wrong very long. He didn't even give him a chance to repent, did he? They died like that. You ain't going to get away with playing church much longer because it's going to increase. It's going to increase. It's going to increase. The glory is going to increase. The holiness of God is going to increase. People are going to run to the altar and they're going to weep and some people are going to wail. Some people are going to go through deliverance and some people are going to go through the, you know, uh, healing that they need. There's people that's been raped as a child. There's people that need to be restored and not ignored. Excuse me. See, when God's presence is the strongest is when you need to linger the longest. And he's going to increase it. And instead of you looking at what time it should be, you're going to start forgetting everything and starting getting intimately. Where time's no longer an issue because I want him. I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by his side, I will abide. I love him better every day. Oh, it is Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. Down in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garment and his blood has made me so Some of you will start waking up from dreams where you had an encounter with God. Some of you are going to start seeing angels in your home. So, some of you, or even those of you around the world, you're going to see Jesus. This year, Jesus and angels are going to begin to appear. We're going to begin to come back to the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what you know to do to do what God has called you. Because there's times that we don't know what to do. But I'm telling you, those that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed with strength. And see, some of you, you trust God, but you doubt yourself. And Satan's strongest weapon in the church is insecurity, fear. What are people going to think? You say, brother, you, you need to repent. You have a bad attitude. Yeah, I know it. I hate the devil. And if you are a Luciferian, you're stupid. Unapologetically, if you let the devil be your Lord. Because Romans 6 says, to whom you yield yourself. Romans 6, 16. To whom you yield yourself to. That's to whom you are the servant of. Jesus did not apologize to Peter when he said, get behind me, Satan. But you notice when Jesus got kissed on the cheek from Judas, he called Judas friend. God's reaching out to you to draw you near where you carry an anointing that's going to become visible. And you may not see it, but other people are going to notice it. So anyway, yes sir. We got four beasts in the Old Testament. But do we have people that are willing to take their place for the glory of God to be made manifest in every place. I'm not through preaching, but I'm just listening because I'm a minister tomorrow morning if they'll let me. If you, he's got his thumb up. Some of you might get, I don't care. Because you know, I preached to empty churches before. You say empty churches? Yeah. And the word don't return void. The word don't return void. And even more so, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Instagram, no matter where it might be, even Tip Top or whatever that stupid thing is, the word don't return void. And it's easy for you to find lewd stuff. Lewd stuff. What's lewd? Can anybody tell me what the definition of lewd is? What's lewd? 
Do what? Come on now, say something. Do y'all know what lewd is? Come on, Google it at least. Do what? Lewd, possible. You could almost change L into an N and know what lewd is. They're very lewd. And it's very easy now that our society, and if you take offense to this, get over it. But it's amazing how that a woman will hide herself and hide her panties and bra, but you get her in, a, in, in some water and they call it a bikini and it's nothing but panties and bra. Isn't that a double standard? And you find today's society is skin exposed as much as you can see. And I've always had a standard. What's on display is always for sale. But see, I told Jesus, I said, you're totally unfair. You say that it's a sin for a man to look at a woman when you put hormones in the man. But see, God didn't pervert the hormone. Sin did. And God put the hormone for reproduction, but we don't have a desire to make disciples, to reproduce. Do we? Because if you have a desire to see the kingdom of God prosper, you're going to become a soul winner. You're going to become a spiritual father, a spiritual mother. You're going to begin to speak into people's lives even though they don't want to hear it. Because I'm telling you straight up, these are the last days. I'm telling you, he's coming after a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. I'm telling you, what you think is irrelevant because you're going to piss in your pants when you stand before the God Almighty. And you know yourself whether or not you're right. Are wrong. Church is over as far as playing church. We're fixing to have church. And that means we're going to come to church and we ain't going to sing nothing. We ain't going to preach or say nothing. And we're just going to literally hover down in that Shekinah. And that Shekinah is going to melt you in His presence. There's a place I went to in Brazil, in Guanya, Brazil. And they took me up on this mountain in the city of Guanya. And on this mountain is just everywhere there's people that come there from a hundred mile radius year round. And this camp over here is playing the guitar and worshiping. This camp over here, these people over here in the woods, you can't see them, but you can hear them. They're wailing in the Holy Ghost. And there's over here prophesying. And there's over here making declarations. And over here they're laughing all throughout the mountains. Because they had a communist woman as a president of that nation when I was down there last. But now they voted in a guy that's a tongue-talking dude, president of Brazil. Now, there's a lot of things that's not always right. But to hinge the door with oil means that you can open and close it smoother. And we're going to see a move of God. The White House will be white again. And I'm telling you, it's not a color issue. It's a heart issue. I don't care how you look at it. If you think white is racism, you better tell that snow to get dark real fast. Am I making sense? God chose what He want to chose. And honestly, I don't know any black people. I know brown people. Your hair black, but your skin brown. Is that the truth? One of the churches that I preached at, ooh, I got a YouTube I preached at black church. Maybe about 500 people there. Power God had to let everybody laid out. I preached three hours. Nobody left. Because see where your heart is. But if all you want to do is see with your natural eyes and think with your carnal brain, you're not part of the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ is neither male nor female. It's not red, yellow, black, or white. Because see, what is in God's sight is how He sees you, whether or not you're with that spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And your culture can cheat you out of the glory if you care more about what people think than what Jesus thinks. I confronted a pastor in, 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 outside of Nashville a while back and I told him, said, God says there's adultery in your church. He said, what do you mean? I said, God said there's, there's illegals here, which wasn't an issue with me, but he said there's illegals that have wives and children up here and wives and children down there. They got they're their natural country. 
He said, well, that's our culture. I said, but your Bible was written before your culture was created. And I said, God told me to tell you to get the adultery out of your church. He said, I ain't going to do it. And he got mad at me. And all at once, I just had an open vision. I prophesied as he walked out. I said, God said within six months, there'll be a for sale sign in front of your church. Within six months, he called me. He said, you put a curse on us. No, I said, God said, get sin out of the camp. And you didn't want to deal with it. Because if you got somebody shacking up in your church and you think they're married, but the Holy Ghost says something ain't right. I mean, if you got people living in sin and there's not conviction in your atmosphere, oh, we got to show them love. Yeah, you're going to love them into the casket and you're going to have to let go of them when they go to hell. Because God is not mocked. You sow corruption, you reap. Before I close this, I want to give an opportunity for an impartation of revelation. Because I hate sometimes preaching what God requires of me. Because you don't know the people that sometimes have lambasted me and criticized me. And Mark, you don't preach in love. And you sound like you're mad all the time. I don't give a rip, you know. Let's go Biden. Oh no, he's that Brandon. That's what it is. What you think of me don't matter. What he thinks of me is all I need. <laughs> because when God is for you, who can be against you? You say, well, you're not going to submit to the government? I could cuss on that one, but it's going to follow up No. But you say, you, you cuss? Well, I know preachers that drink wine. I'll sit there and drink my water. I know preachers that drink alcohol and beer. But then again, the culture of the United States is, when I was preaching in Germany, man, two guys, that was the best sermon I ever heard. You want to eat with us? I said, sure. They said, there's a pub down the road that got the best beer in all of Germany. I'm not a sipping saint. I don't drink alcohol. But I was willing to let them drink their beer while I sat there and drank my water. Bottled water, you know. I'm willing to go. I went and walked in a bar a while back and I said, your name's David. How'd you know? And all at once the anointing came on him and he began to weep. I began in, I was, I've been in gay bars. And I'm not gay, okay? Let's just get that straight. My wrist don't drop. I mean, I'm in the Bourbon Street during the Mardi Gras and, 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 and somebody groped me and I don't know who to hit. And they said, Mark, don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him. You say, that was in the flesh. Yeah, I want to hit him in the flesh. I'd repent later. Because they said, see that bus over there? If there's any strife, they put you in that bus when it's full, they take you put you in jail. Why is it the world can control us but we don't want the Father to control His children because we're bottle-sucking adults that drive a car and we got our feelings hurt. Come here, darling. I want to produce something out of you. Yeah, you. Because see, God wants to use you mightily. Quickly get someone behind her. Bye. I'm not touching you. We're not pushing you down. But there's an inner healing that God's going to begin to do. God's going to begin to elaborate the important issues that are with you. Because God's going to open your eyes to see beyond what men did say. And God's going to give you a clear word where you're going to walk the straight and narrow God's way. Because what is true to you, you know what it is to deal with people on the street. You know what it is to have nothing to eat. And you know what it is to be poor and not want and not have no more. You know what it is to have lost it all but I'm telling you this you don't know what it is to have him that is the Lord of all and he's going to embrace you and from this day I prophesy and command it to be take this note down within three months your lifestyle is going to change dramatically because divine connections God's going to begin to cause to be and God's going to begin to heal you of the hurts that has repeatedly 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 come against you verbally and assaulted you and hurt you and, and you just back up and shut up your whole 
hold it all within. But God says, I am healing you from inside out. And I'm going to remove all fear and doubt. And a teacher, a preacher, you'll begin to be. And you're going to be one that's going to have the fortitude and going to set the captives free. Because I see you as a spiritual mother that's going to hug them. And they're going to fall out of the power of God because of the mantle that you'll wear. Because God said, I'm going to use you in the supernatural. And you're literally going to see victory, victory, victory. And you'll not no longer despair. Now, he's pouring in fresh oil. I break every curse that's spoken about you. I command every lie to come truth and let truth surface and every liar be exposed. Fathers, there are even three that need to go to jail for a season, Lord God. There are three that have taken advantage of her emotionally, physically. And I thank you, Father, that you judge those that have come against your child, your daughter, and you love her. So I thank you that your anointing is going to hug her and your anointing is going to begin to move in her life where she is going to laugh, she's going to sing, she's literally going to begin to saturate people's being with an anointing that's going to destroy yokes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Lose her! In G- there it is. Inner healing from your child of three to the age you be. God is going to give you joy that's unspeakable, full of his glory. Thank you. Can I pray for you? Yeah, you right there on the front. Stop right there. Catch her. You know how to prophesy, but you still question when God wants you to. You sit back and watch and you say, God, let other people be used by you. But God says, when he turns on the light, the vessel it flows through is the one that has the power. And he says, you got the power in the name of Jesus. You've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rage us, we will not be defeated. You've got the power in the name of the Lord. Sing it again. You've got the power in the name of Jesus. You've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rage us, we will not be defeated. You've got the power in the name of the Lord. And when you prophesy, it ain't got to be in a building, an ecclesia. It's going to be in spontaneous places. Anywhere you go, the Spirit of God is going to begin to flow because you're going to see the glory of God begin to use you publicly. Prophesy to the wind and you'll see it change direction again and again. Catch her. Change. Let her go. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Lord gave me this song about you. You've come too far to turn back now. You've got to let go of these century circles of just constantly the same, oh, same, oh, same, oh, same, oh. You've come too far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed you yet. I see a home of your own, and I don't 
want this to go beyond. Y'all keep this quiet now. But several times I saw marriage in your life. But I, I want to tell you something. You still deal with that frustration of that resurrection of what we used to do and be. And I'm telling you, there's no answer in your past. Because if you want your children in heaven, if you want your family and friends in heaven, you cannot go backwards to the forces of hell. You say, I ain't doing nothing wrong. I said, it, the devil is. And these things come and go, come and go, come and go, come and go. And that's big deal. You're tempted. It's when you quit being tempted, it's when it's a big deal. You know when I'm going to get paranoid? When I can't find the devil. Because I'm so used to going through the battles. I'm so used to going through the war. When I got sudden peace and it's a glorious release and I can't find a problem, can't find anything, whoa, man, I must be in heaven right now. But I'm telling you, God's at work. God's at work. God's at work. God's at work. Did I do anything wrong, Pastor? God's at work. You know, inside of you, sir, as a teacher, inside of you as a dormant preacher, you literally can do the outline. You can do the study. You can do the guide. You could be an elder. And there's things that you got that, that you, 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 you don't want men to see. But I'm telling you, there's a level of the glory of God concerning you in public ministry. But I'm telling you straight up and straight down, every one of you got a destiny. Every one of you got a call of God on you, pastor. You say, I'm not a pastor. You know what? Anybody that can love like Jesus has got a shepherd's heart. Well, I'm not called to behind the pulpit. But then again, there's people like you that can hug anybody and hug everybody. Because there's people that need a hug, need a love, need a word. And see, you may not, quote, have a title in a building. But then again, when did Jesus limit the title to a corporation or an identification of, well, I'm pastor of this, 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 this? Let me tell you something. The body of Christ is fitly joined together in every joint supplies, and there's gifts. And some of you, like you, preacher, teacher, spirit of evangelist. Oh, my God. Moses parked the water. You say Moses was a man. But then there's neither male nor female in the spirit. Because there's people you know, they always focus it on the enemy behind them. And they always focus on the dead end street in front of them. But they can never see God part the water. And then they're scared to part, walk out there where the water's parted because they're scared the waves is going to come in on them. They'll trust God to begin with, but they won't keep walking it out. Am I making sense? And I'm telling you straight up, everybody here, you got a destiny. Everybody here, you got a responsibility. Everybody here, you got a call. Like you, you know how to pray. You know how to stay. You know how to seek the face of God every day. And what's needed amongst us is duplication of people that will fall on their face spontaneously and let the glory of God take place spontaneously because you could stop a car accident. You can stop a murder. You can stop a suicide. Do you realize more suicides have taken place in our military in the last three months than all of the COVID deaths in the last three months? And this is on the website of Fox News. Because people are losing hope. And they're just losing hope and they're giving up. And they don't have nothing to live for because you ain't told them that it is Jesus. Wonderful. He's the answer. Jesus is the answer. There's not another answer under no man can be saved except by Jesus. Mohammed can't save you. Mohammed was a pervert. Raped a nine-year-old child. Buddha. Those oh, fat little Buddhas. There were seven different Buddhas. And the Buddha that was fat was cute, so they sold him as a trinket. Krishna! Nirvana. Let me tell you something. The devil's a liar and he's a thief and he wants to steal your ability to make your choices. And your government wants to force you to let them make 
your choices. I want to call your kid their property. Is that in your government? The only thing keeping our government from a distance from our private lives because they already, they know your phone. I'm driving on the interstate and I'm using GPS. They know by GPS how fast I'm going. And all they got to do is lock up on my phone and say, we're sending you a speeding ticket right now. In China, they know all your faces. You walk into Walmart, they know your face. They know your earlobes. Nobody on this earth has an ear shaped like you. Nobody on this earth has an iris and eye like you. Nobody on this earth has a fingerprint like you. Nobody on this earth has a voice like you. Voice print, eye print, fingerprint, ear print, your DNA, your blood type, everything. And I'm telling you, we are in the last days, but he's coming after a what kind of church? A barely get along, barely make it people? No. He's coming after a glorious church because if you'll read the last of Hebrews, even though Nero fed Christians the lions, there were those that by faith raised the dead of their own loved ones. Jesus is coming. There don't have to be no more abortions. Jesus is coming because all them aborted babies are offered to Moab, the God of sacrifice, because Ruth used to worship Moab and take sacrificed children. Then she come into the family of Naomi. And Naomi was a witness to Ruth. And Ruth said, I'll forsake all and I'll serve your God and I'll serve you and I'll go wherever you go and I'll do what you do because she was a lion in the midst of darkness. And I'm saying, are you and Esther that you're prepared for a time such as this? Are you going to be a Deborah that's going to rise up and fight the enemy when no one else will? Am I making sense? 